My name is Michelle Phillips, and I'm an Instructional Technology Specialist at Reynolds Middle School in Prosper ISD. Thanks for joining us on the Prosper ISD GAF train. Our second stop is going to take a quick look and introduce Google Docs. You can open an existing doc by finding it and clicking, double-clicking on it, or you can create a new one by going to New and then selecting Google Docs. You can rename your document a couple different ways. On the top left where it says Untitled Document, if you click on that, it will open a new box where it will let you rename it. Another way to rename your document is by going to the File menu, and Rename is an option there. You can also share from here, create a new document, open an existing, make a copy, move it to a different folder or to the trash, See your revision history. This is especially helpful in case you're sharing a document and you're not sure who changed certain things. You can go back and look. You can download it as something different. You can download a Google Doc as a Microsoft Word document, as a PDF. There are different options there. You can publish to the web, which then takes that document and makes a web page out of it. You can email your collaborators, email as an attachment, or this is also where you would change your margins in page setup. You can also print. Your edit and view menus are very similar to Microsoft Word. You have the undo and redo actions and the paste, cut, and copy. You also can view the print layout. You can show rulers and spelling suggestions from here. You can also go full screen. You then have your insert menu. You can insert an image, links, equations, drawings, tables, uh, a footnote, page numbers, page counts, bookmarks. Uh, table of contents is a great feature, and header and footers. So let's look at inserting images. So when you insert an image, you'll see a new box open up, and you have different options. You can upload directly from your computer. You can take a snapshot. You can enter a URL. You can look, find, look through your albums, or you can find a picture that is already in your Google Drive. If you click on Google Drive, you can then give the options of it's in your drive, it's in the shared with me, or if it's in the recent. You can then go, if you click on my drive, you can then go into specific folders and find the picture you're looking for. You can also search right from this area, and it will take you to a Google search. And you'll notice that results are shown labeled for commercial reuse with modification. If you insert a drawing, this is where you can move shapes and objects and images where you want them. And then all you have to do is click Save and Close, and it will put it on your page. You can edit it at any time and have options to add text or move the text around the picture. This is a great way to create columns in Google Docs because unlike Microsoft Word, there's not an automatic feature where you can just select how many columns you want. But if you insert a drawing and then have text boxes side by side, that will create the columns for you. Your format menu, you can format your text. You can also do the strike throughs, the paragraph styles, line spacing. You can also format your images. So if an image is selected, you'll be able to crop the image. You can look at the image options, which then let you change the transparency of it. You can replace or reset images there as well. Your tools menu, this is where you'll check your spelling. You can define a word, check your word count. But one of the things that I really like about the Tools menu is the Research feature. It opens a new box, and then you can type in what your search is, and you can research a topic from right there. It will give you images. You also have the option of previewing the source, inserting the link to the source, or actually citing it in your paper. So I have an untitled new document. So if I wanted to put in let's say Labor Day, I could highlight that and then go to my Tools menu and click on Research, and then it will come up with different web results. I can click right there and we'll also, I can look at images as well, so I can say Not Filtered or ones that I can reuse. I can also choose what style of citation format. 
So then I look at my sources, and if I hover over it, I can preview it, which will show me something about it. I can insert a link, which if I look at my page, it will then hyperlink that text to this document. Or I can cite it, where if I'm citing a source, it will do it at the bottom of the page in whatever format you've chosen. You also have the table add-ons and help menus. Adding a table is just like Microsoft Word where you choose how many rows and columns that you want. Add-ons add functionality to your document. So you'll have to look through and see what you need. Publish to WordPress, so I could type and, and directly publish to my blog. I could create a table of contents out of all my pages. I could do a doc to form, so it would turn it into a form. Also, GMath will help you insert the math equations. It will show you how to type them so they show up the way students need to see them. You have your toolbar across the top. Many of these I'm sure you are familiar with, where your text, your undo, redo, you can choose the font size, bold, italics, underline, the color, the alignment. It, it'll tell you if you're in editing mode, suggesting, or viewing, because you may have just been given, it may not be your document, and you may have just been given viewing rights. If you choose if you click on the font, at the bottom it will say More Fonts. This gives you the option of adding more default fonts into your list. So you go through and choose the ones you want. Commenting. So you can add comments to different documents. I love this feature and I use it often with my students. So that way I can highlight certain text in their answers and then I can ask them for more information and they know that the comment goes to the text next to it. When they're done, they can actually resolve it, and it will send me an email notification telling me that they have checked it, and then I can go back and look at it. This has been a quick introduction to Docs. You can find this video and more at edtechinaction.com.